Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access Trader.com. Uh, weekend update show. Hope everybody is doing well. I usually do uh, my recordings, usually it's Saturday morning or Sunday morning ahead of the day, but tomorrow I got the family coming over for a barbecue, then my son and daughter have uh, basketball training, so there's a lot of stuff. And the reason why, it's around 7.30 Saturday night. Um, not that I have you know nothing to do, but I literally have nothing to do. Uh, my, my, my son has friends over, uh, my daughter is doing her thing. I have, I have no place left in this house. So logically, let me record the nightly video. So hopefully everybody's doing well. Uh, if you are uh, new to us, uh, or if you are uh, a very faithful watcher, follower, whatever the case may be, thank you very much. Seriously, thank you very much for tuning in, uh, spending about 10, 15 minutes uh, with us. Uh, only thing I ask in return, if you can be so kind, take a second out. Uh, like the video, share, subscribe, uh, and all that good stuff. And hopefully, again, I could continue uh, to help you, right? To help you kind of navigate uh, these markets on the day-to-day -day, uh, basis. So let's talk about it, right? Big story uh, for this week was the testimony for Jerome Powell, right? Uh, for Friday's session, um, you have a lot of speculation throughout the last couple of years when is it going to be finally time to cut rates? I think that's the best thing uh, that was on the table for the last several years. And all you heard was the same language over the last several years. Well, you know, inflation is still high. Uh, we would like to get inflation below this number and blah, 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 we'll monitoring inflation. And nothing ever got thought. Nothing ever got said that was concrete. There was always a lot of room for interpretation, a lot of speech uh, through both sides of the mouth. But this time around in the Jackson Hole testimony, well, Jay Powell finally started seeing some things. Uh, you know, the way the futures market reacted, uh, they were almost anticipating about a hundred basis point cut throughout the year. And he actually came out and said, it might be time, right? It might be time. And, and again, the speculation is fueling uh, that a rate cut could come as early as the September meeting. Uh, obviously, it would be a little bit of a curveball considering um, Trump, for example, you know, said, like, look, there should be absolutely no rate cut uh, ahead uh, before uh, the election. So we'll see what happens there. But at least the investors got a little bit of clues what potentially could happen uh, instead of a lot of vague innuendo speculation type of moves. And if you look at uh, the end of the week tally, um, S and P gained another one and a half percent. The Dow was up another one point three percent, and the Nasdaq rose was one point four. But it wasn't one of those everything is good steady weeks. Thursday we had a nasty reversal, absolutely nasty, and that's usually what's going to happen when you have you start running into a linear type of area. As a matter of fact, we spoke about it on Wednesday. If you guys remember, I said, "Listen, I'm always going to be ready on both sides of the market." But Thursday, the way it happened, it was so aggressive and came out of nowhere. Ironically, we traded more on the long side in the beginning of Thursday's action than we did on the short side uh, because all that, that sell-off really came on one candle, realistically came on one candle. And the last thing we want to do, especially from the trading aspect, is start chasing in the middle of an individual candle. But the good part was, and you could really see uh, the echoing statement how important the 50-day was, it took us quite a while to get above the 50-day moving average on August the 15th. Thursday's sell-off successfully tested the 50-day moving average, bounced, and then Friday, we just had that really exaggerated move, uh, especially in the morning. Uh, you saw a lot of names going very, very aggressive that looked like they're about to fall off a cliff only on Thursday, only to reclaim their levels at the half steady bounces. Was everything bouncing? No. Did everything recover from uh, Thursday's sell off? Absolutely not. And, you know, when I will go through a chart, some charts, especially the mega cap names, will kind of show you that not everything was so strong. But the names like NVIDIA, 
absolutely bounced back very aggressively uh, ahead of their earnings on Wednesday. And that's going to be a very, very uh, important um, item for this week, kind of a catalyst, you know, bringing up the entire market potentially. Uh, but you'll see a lot of names that not participated or even advanced some of their losses from Thursday, which uh, the devil advocate kind of in, in, in me kind of says, well, maybe when nothing is, you know, maybe we're not that safe. But if you look at the majority of the action, as long as we keep on building, and again, we talked about this all the time, just because we're above the 50-day moving average doesn't mean we're going to go up every single day. And it kind of really showed you, especially on Thursday's engulfing candle that took out four or five days uh, worth of buying. But as long as we continue to close over that 50-day moving average, you have to assume risk is on. As long as your portfolio or as long as your positions are above the 50-day, I think you have a pretty easy out in case they lose that 50-day uh, on a closing basis. Uh, this week also, at, especially towards Friday, you saw a massive move uh, on the Bitcoin uh, Bitcoin crypto names. Uh, you saw Coinbase really, really take off on Friday. You saw names like Mara, right? You saw names like Mara put in a very, very aggressive move. You saw MSTR uh, not only had a big run with crypto, but you can see here, uh, it reclaimed the 50-day moving average as well. So crypto going into next week, uh, again, I'm, I don't really follow Bitcoin uh, too closely, but you, you can imagine uh, if, the, especially the over the weekend session holds up, there should be higher price uh, action going into uh, next week. So let's talk about some names, uh, how they're progressing, how they are potentially positioned uh, for the up and coming week. Let's start off with NVIDIA, right? So NVIDIA obviously had this massive breakout for us uh, above this 20-day moving average, reclaiming the 50-day moving average and went from 120 uh, to roughly almost 131. 130.75 was the high from last week. Uh, you saw a pretty aggressive sell-off, just like everything else did on Thursday. But Friday, I recovered to reclaim back the five-day moving average. Again, they continue to bet pretty aggressively. Institutional money flow uh, is coming in still very, very aggressive uh, ahead of their uh, ahead of their quarter, which is going to be Wednesday evening. Uh, they continue to bet the 35s, the 135s, the 140s, uh, and the 150 calls. So again, very, very bullish action uh, continues to be in NVIDIA. The one thing I believe it will happen, I, I think prior to Wednesday, uh, if we get any type of weakness in NVIDIA, I'd use that for I use that for an opportunity to get along the stock into earnings. Nobody's taking it into the number, but I think there will be. Um, I think there will be uh, an, an, an exceptional opportunity um, to kind of get cheap shares if there are cheap shares. Because again, they might just start running this thing up uh, every single day into the number. But I'd like to see them just for a trade. Uh, just for a trade ahead of its number, I'd like to see it take out this whole July range. And if we do it, who knows? Maybe we could get a run ahead of their numbers into the 135 area. Uh, Tesla continues to be uh, very, very strong. Again, ugly reversal on Thursday, just like with everything else. But Friday, reclaim back the 50-day moving average. I'm going to watch this candle high here. Not necessarily last week's highs, but I'm going to watch these two candles here. Uh, going into this week. I want to see if they can start reclaiming back uh, Thursday's reversal and Wednesday's high. I think there's a shot it goes back to highs. Because again, if the market continues to, uh, to to continue to act well, there again, there is a value pocket all the way up to this 234 to 235 level. So it's something uh, that we have to continue to monitor, especially uh, if it continues to hold uh, its position in this channel. Uh, if you look at names, for example, I'll give you the opposite direction, right? Uh, Microsoft, right? We talked about Microsoft never is one of the very few names that are still below the 50-day moving average. And this thing had one of the hardest reversals on Thursdays. Again, stocks that are going to be underneath supply are always going to be the ones uh, that are getting uh, getting the biggest exposure if there is a rug pull. Uh, I'm still watching the top of the channel here where she keeps on getting rejected. Again, assuming uh, the market continues to be uh, continues to be um, strong, right? Continues to be strong. Uh, you got Netflix. You know, Netflix had a massive, massive move 
uh, in the last several days, coming in a little bit of profit taking. But again, can you really fault it? Uh, Netflix has come from 650 uh, all the way to 711 in five sessions. Again, a bunch of series of lower highs. If it pulls into the 10 day moving average, roughly around the 674, 675 area, uh, could give an area for a potential bounce. Uh, likely it needs to take out a couple of channels just to kind of wake itself up, but still a uh, very, very good uh, looking chart. Uh, if you look at Amazon, uh, again, another name, just like Microsoft, uh, you know, we're still below the 50 day moving average. If you want to see this market really get aggressive, really, really run, both Amazon and Microsoft need to get above the 50 because if they do get above the 50, it's going to light everything up. But again, they're going to need to do work. Uh, as you can see here, uh, the 50-day moving average on Amazon is 183 and change. It has a lot of work to do. If you look at Microsoft, um, the, the, excuse me, my approach on the wrong symbol. Uh, if you look at Microsoft, we know 134, 135. We're still far away from that. So again, these stocks need uh, a lot of work. Uh, Apple, right? Apple has been on a great, great run. Our, arguably the strongest mega cap name. Uh, it reclaimed the 50-day moving average on August the 8th, had a big, big run. Uh, this is kind of my point about Netflix. You see how, how Apple successfully tested the green line, the 10-day? That's kind of my point of Netflix. It needs to do uh, exactly the same thing. But this whole formation uh, is holding up uh, very, very well. Uh, AMD, uh, you know, it's fighting to get back above the 50-day moving average. It took, had a great, great run. It really needs to clear out this whole channel here, the July highs for a bigger move uh, into the 65 supply. So that looks continues to look uh, pretty good. And the last but not least, let's talk about Google. Again, another name, uh, just like Microsoft, like Amazon, they're the ones that have the hardest time. They're the ones that, that can't go on that mega run like we've seen in NVIDIA, like we've seen in Tesla, like we've seen uh, in Apple and et cetera, et cetera, because again, they're below supply. So the bulls uh, ultimately are very, very strong for now. As long as we continue to hold, and this is the most important point, as long as we continue to hold 473 on the close, we're Gucci, as the kids would say, right? We're gold, uh, all jokes aside. We stay above 473 on the close. Risk is on. If we get below 473, and that's where we reclaimed on August the 15th, that's obviously, uh, we'll go back to sell buys. But again, market overall uh, looks good. Uh, look at some names that look really good here. Look at Robinhood, right? Robinhood. Uh, is very close to reclaiming back its 50-day moving average. You can see it stopped there perfectly on uh, the light blue line. Uh, all Robinhood needs to do is get back above like this 2150 area. Any close above like 2150 uh, could get Robinhood going. Again, I, I like these crypto stocks. This MSTR, uh, just like the Robinhood chart, is above the 50-day moving average. All it needs to do come Monday is reclaim it, right? Just confirm it. And you'll get a next move up as well. Other than that, you can go through, you know, pretty much any single chart, uh, anything that's approaching the 50 day. And this is kind of the same common denominator. Any stock that is above the 50 day moving average and you want to swing that stock, God bless. As long as it doesn't close below, you can have your identity, you could have your undeniable, identifiable risk area for you to exit your position and you have a good guideline how to keep your swing if that is your uh, drug of choice. But other than that, uh, market continues to be excellent. It really is excellent. Uh, I found last Monday through Thursday really awesome training. I really did. Uh, both long and the short side. Meta was great. NVIDIA was great. Tesla was great. I found Friday really frustrating. And the reason why I found Friday really frustrating is when you had that big technical damage day on Thursday and that candle engulfed, you know, four or five days worth of buying, it left stocks in the middle of the channels. And what we witnessed in the first like 20, 30 minutes of the day, uh, especially when Powell started sp uh, speaking, you saw these really aggressive pulls and really aggressive moves higher. And I, I, my first two trades of the day, I usually... I'm usually pretty pretty good at judging market sentiment. So I took an initial trade on Tesla. I did an re initial rejection, went down like a dollar and change, you know, made some, did some, did okay there. Then I shorted Microsoft going on the previous day's low. I actually took out the previous day's low and it whipped me back. And I was like, wait a minute, there's just too much volatility. Stocks are really not supposed to be that aggressive with every single headline 
uh, that um, that Powell said. So once I see a day like that is getting aggressive, and you know any type of testimony, especially that's going to set the tone for the day, it's like trading a Fed day on steroids. I, I don't like trading those aggressive days. And if you find yourself in your strategy exciting, in other words, if your if your heart starts palpitating. Uh, and you start sweating every single time you put on a trade. That's not good. That's not a good thing. You don't want excitement. You don't want the, you know you don't want the you know the heart rate to to go up. You want boring, man. You want boring. You want highly predictable. You want lethargic. You want institutional money flow going in all direct all the same direction. The last thing you want to do is have a, an exciting day, an exciting process. That means you're doing something that is not giving you everything in your ability. To have a reward to risk strategy. Basically, your strategy is opposite. It's all risk to reward. And that's the last thing you want to do, especially if you are a professional trader. So going into this week, again, as long as the bulls maintain the 50-day, we are bullish. If they get below the 50-day and stay there, obviously we saw exactly what happened. Uh, when we lost the 50-day, the market went down, NASDAQ went down 9.4%. So again, guys, over 50-day bullish. Under 50 day is bearish. We're above the 50 day moving average. Risk is on until otherwise. Guys, God bless everybody. Have a great, great weekend. You'll probably see this video at some point Sunday morning. I doubt Kenyon's going to uh, do this Saturday night. Uh, but God be with you. Hope everybody stays happy, healthy, and I will see you on the field on Monday. Take care.